Welcome to View from the Grandstand. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Justin Pora. My guest today, Jim McGraw, Director of Advanced Advertising over at New York Interconnect, having a ton of New York Interconnect interviews here on View from the Grandstand, one of our favorite clients. It's always nice to chat with someone over at NYI, and today we have Jim. Jim, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Justin. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Happy to have you on. So we've reached this point last year where we thought the Olympics were coming around, obviously with COVID-19, everything kind of stepping in, you know, a lot of sports got canceled. The Olympics probably being the most significant because when you expect for something to come up every four years and you don't get it, it's a big shock. And this is worldwide. It expands across the world. However, the Olympics coming up this summer, it's still being called Tokyo 2020, but we're doing it in 2021. And it's just, a great hope. It signifies great hope for the global sense. Now we have sports back, hopefully some fans in the stands in Tokyo, who really knows, but now we are officially kind of seeing progression and signs of advancement after the COVID-19 pandemic. So why do you feel that it's important for advertisers and brands to be a part of an Olympics that was a year delayed and now in a year where everything's starting to kind of return to normalcy. We are finally starting to see that step. Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. It, it signifies hope, it signifies uh, a return to normalcy. And the Olympics every four years is always that way. It signifies hope and it's great stories and it's you know patriotic country pride or um, your ancestry. Maybe you're cheering for your, the, the countries of your ancestry. So I feel like you're absolutely right in that it does signify this hope. And while we've gotten back to uh, traditional mainstream American sports, this is going to be really the first huge international event because of COVID-19 and the issues there. They were able to solve for um, events and leagues playing within one country. Uh, whether it's the English Premier League or some European stuff or in within the United States between bubbles and getting back to more uh, traditional schedules this year. But an international event where you're having thousands of athletes coming from all over the world, I think it does really signify hope and moving in a new direction because they're tackling it. I mean, you know, there's going to be bumps in the road as with everything with COVID, but I think that is going to be a really big deal. And as far as advertisers and you know, why they want to be in there. I mean, I, I think everybody always wants to be in the Olympics. It's such a universally beloved event, whether you're huge into sports in your regular life or every four years you tune in for two weeks to cheer on, you know, the United States. It's something that everybody associates with, um, you know, global excellence and patriotic country pride and all of these things that, um, obviously very brand safe. It's, uh, it's great stories to be there and, you know, people want to be there and it's big brands and it's content that uh, advertisers want to be in, whether it's prime time on NBC in the swimming and track and field, or, you know, maybe some of the niche sports that are in the daytime on CNBC or USA. It's still amazing content and it's brand safe content and it's stuff that you know, you don't see all the time, but it adds an element of, you know, fascination for a lot of people. And I think it's coming at a good time too. You know, we all know it was supposed to happen last year. That doesn't happen. It comes around a year later. We're starting to get to that point of, you know, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with this pandemic. And when you look at what's been going on in the country, it's nice to have everyone kind of get behind the red, white, and blue to watch it in the United States. So to see it all kind of coming together and, you know, like you mentioned, when it comes to advertisers and brands wanting to market themselves with it, I mean, there's no event quite like the Olympics, especially, you know, we're finally going to be able to send our athletes into different countries. We still have in our domestic sports leagues here, teams that are in Canada, that aren't allowed to play in their home stadiums because they're in the United States. So the fact that we're reaching that point, I feel is huge. And I think it's a big step in the right direction. And it's just coming at a perfect time from my perspective. I, again, I couldn't agree more. It's coming at a perfect time. And, you know, it's one more element that adds to the mystique of the Olympics. You know, 
these these athletes train with you know little budgets and in conditions that aren't professional athletes in a lot of cases and there's always those compelling stories when it comes to an olympics and you know the the coverage always does a great job of highlighting these stories well this is just going to be a year with another wrinkle how did these athletes adjust to preparing for it to be in july of 2020 and then having to push it back here how did they train during the covid pandemic how, how were they able to get out there could they get to a swimming pool or a running track or could they you know train in judo or wrestling because of COVID protocols, like how, how did athletes deal with that? And, you know, that's just, again, one of the many amazing, compelling stories that comes along with an Olympics. And it's just an extra twist this year. Yeah. There's, there's really nothing quite like the Olympics. It's people from all over the world, people from all different backgrounds. It is a one of a kind event and very excited to have it back this year. So in that little statement, you just had, you brought up the coverage a little bit. So when it comes to New York interconnect, what kind of packages are you guys doing to prepare for the Olympics? You know, in terms of what you're offering advertisers, what networks you're working with, and just when it comes to the show that you guys are helping put on, what kind of work goes into that? And what are you guys offering? Certainly. So uh, NBC universal uh, announced this week, 7,700 hours of coverage on their traditional linear networks as well as streaming. So there's tons of content out there. Uh, the New York Interconnect has coverage on CNBC, USA, Bravo, MSNBC, NBC Sports Network, as well as the streaming app. So like everything we're doing these days, we're following the audience where and how they're watching. Um, you know, it's not only traditional linear TV anymore, it's the linear extensions, whether people are streaming it on a device or second screening it while they're watching something or, you know, even streaming so that they can watch multiple sports at the same time if you're, you know, a real avid fan. So, like everything we're doing, we're trying to follow the audience where and when they're watching. It's such a buzzword in our industry where we talk about cord cutters, but as mo most of us know, the reality is they're not really cutting the cord. They're just viewing the same content in a different way. And the New York Interconnect is out there with those abilities to still follow that audience. So, you know, if you're a household who does not have a traditional set top box, but you're a streamer, we can still get those, um, those eyeballs and those households in this, this coverage. So it's really an awesome, um, set of networks because what the cable networks offer in my opinion because one of the things i love most about the olympics is the the sports that you don't see every day you know i love watching the basketball and the soccer and track and field and stuff but when you can randomly turn on cnbc and see rifle shooting or modern pentathlon or judo or something and it, it allows the american sports fan to become you know couch experts for a couple minutes and it's like oh i can't believe he did that and it's it, it's just fun to watch things that aren't in the mainstream you know i'm a huge baseball and football fan but it's a lot of fun to watch some of the other ones and that's a lot of the stuff that um the cable networks are going to have on the NBC Universal family, in addition to those tentpole sports um, coverage in maybe more preliminary rounds and things like that, leading into finals that are going to be covered on traditional NBC. Um, the one other big, big component to our package is the local news component. We have News 12 here in the greater New York area. And while it's always been a trusted and reliable news source, they also have the ability to really focus coverage on a big events, world events. So it's not just local, but they put a local spin on it. And News 12 is part of that package with sponsorships to, you know, have a lot of viewership on screen with logos for scoreboards and medal counts and things like that. But, you know, they're always also going to be doing profiles of local athletes you know if there's a kid from long island who made it into you know the wrestling finals or something like that that's going to be a huge part of coverage on news 12 and you know we we roll that into our package as well so it's the streaming it's the the traditional linear networks and as well as news 12 and cross channels so it's a really all-encompassing robust package that we're offering yeah, that's something that I love to hear as a Long Islander myself. News 12 is my go-to. 
So that's where I get all my information. So to right. see that it's integrated in all of what you guys are trying to do is awesome. And, you know, that, Everyone cares more about local, right? Especially in this type of area. Mm -hmm. I know at least being from Long Island, it's such like a niche community that like you always know when one of these guys are going off to do something huge. And when it comes to the Olympics, again, no bigger spotlight, not international event. You yeah. see a kid that, you know, maybe grew up a couple towns over from you that made it in the event. That's what makes it so much fun. And that is, you know, part of the ambiance that is the Olympics. And what makes it, you know, the number one sporting event in the entire world every four years. So when you brought up a couple of the niche sports, I agree with you when you want to watch like synchronized diving or judo, yeah. you know, that's not something you get to see all the time. So when it comes every four years, it's a huge part of the event. And it's something that everyone looks forward to, as you said, makes people an expert on couches for a while. There are a couple other sports that are coming in this year. That includes yeah. karate, skateboarding, surfing. I know baseball and softball are going to be back after a little hiatus from the Olympics. Does interest for the new games that are joining the spectacle of the Olympics, the five rings, does that interest kind of match the tried and true as far as advertising goes? Um, it matches it in the sense of brands wanting to be a part of it. But I actually think it, what it does is bring in a more diverse audience. Um, you know, there's the traditional, as you say, the, whether it's gymnastics, swimming, track and field, and those are the traditional sports that a lot of people want to come in, but you bring skateboarding and sport climbing and surfing, um, in, and you're getting a younger audience, you're getting a more diverse audience. And that's, that's huge for brands to be a part of. It's not, you know, traditional, if you will, sports. And that allows more people's interest to say, you know, that's what I'm interested in, you know, whether it's a younger audience, like I'm seeing more diversity in the sports. So it's an event that I'm going to tune into now because it's not just track and field and soccer and swimming. And one thing that I give uh, the Olympics a lot of credit for as well, because it certainly piqued my interest is they also added new events to traditional sports. They're going to have three on three basketball. They're going to have mixed gender relays in swimming and track and field, which I think is a, a, an awesome idea that yes. that brings in. I know golf has done it a couple of times in the on the PGA Tour the last few years where they've had mixed events. And it really was fun to watch, for lack of a better phrasing. But uh, mixed gender relays, I think, is a great idea. Three on three basketball. It's not traditional, but it's something that, you know, everybody grew up playing. So you can kind of relate to a thousand it. thousand percent. Yep. And, and I think that's the other part. And again, I said fun a minute ago. It's fun to turn that on and just kind of lose yourself in something like that. Um, so I, I think the diversification of those sports just set up a more diverse audience. And you know, that's great for everybody involved. Yeah. And, you know, a big basketball fan. I can't wait for the three on three. It's going to be awesome. With all these different types of sports and here with Jim McGraw, director of advanced advertising over at NYI, when it comes to multi-screen viewing, that's something that we start to see a lot more of because everyone wants to try and get all of the action at one time in live time if they can. How does that kind of impact an advertiser's media plan when it comes to the Olympics? Well, I, I think it really shows them that they don't want to just buy the NBC national coverage. Like they really should be looking at the, the, the cable networks and the streaming because that's all part of it. And, you know, if you're looking to spend budgets in, you know, careful ways, go after the big markets. New York is the number one market in the, the country. It's number one in buying power. It's number one in disposable incomes. They buy the most luxury cars. It's, it's all of those stats that support spending that extra money and heavying up in New York. And you do want that because I, I, I agree with you know what you said. It's, it's going to be a second screen. It's going to be a multi-screen audience, whether it's you're watching one network on your regular TV and a different one on your laptop or your tablet because you wanted to also catch the Brazil Argentina soccer game or something like that. Um, there, there's so much content out there. It almost, it, for those who are interested in the sports, it almost forces multi-screen viewing. 
on you because you can't catch it all just by watching one screen. So they've got to go out and purchase the, the cable networks and they've got to go out and purchase the streaming and be involved in all of the platforms that cover it because with 77 hours of coverage, I looked it up, it was 339 events over 33 sports. Wow. If, if, if you want to get a good chunk of that into your viewing, you, you have to have all of those different um viewing options and as an advertiser you have to place your place your uh brand in all those different options yep and you know speaking from a viewer perspective i'll have the phone the laptop and the double screen right i'm right there with you i'm right there with you i can't wait i i love the olympics i love that they've added new sports i love that they brought baseball and softball back um partially because, you know, we probably have a pretty good shot at doing well there, but um, yeah. you know, it, it, it's a lot of fun. I'm definitely interested in seeing some of these new sports um, as well as what we talked about, you know, the, the new spins on some of the sports and, you know, and then again, I love the winter Olympics, but I find the summer Olympics so much more relatable because it is sports that we collectively grew up playing for the most part, whether it's just racing against your friends or swimming or, you know, playing basketball and things like that. So it, the, the content is always top notch. It doesn't matter what sport it is, but there's always that international intrigue and there's always so much more to it that it's, it's a place where brands, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer for a, an event like that, because, you know, you do see advertisers shying away from some of the professional sports these days. Um, you know, there's content, whether it's, you know, just events that are happening and it gets politicized and there's all sorts of stuff like that. But the, the inter, International Olympics is just still the Olympics. It's still something that is like set above the rest. And, yeah. you know, brands need to be there. And, you know, that's just all there really is to it. And, and, I, and I think they'll go out and do it. And on a local level in the New York market, I think it's something that, tier two advertisers and local advertisers also really want to be a part of because it kind of, it puts their brand out there in an event that they just know everybody's going to watch. It's not, it's not like, again, you know, I watch a lot of baseball and football, but the, the audience of the Olympics is very different and it's, it has a different audience profile and it's something to take advantage of. A thousand percent. And, you know, of course, sports fans like you and I get that, a little bit more because we are in tune to the sport and we enjoy it. But even just the traditional viewer of television, I mean, my mom's going to watch the majority of the Olympics because she understands what it means to the country. She knows what it means to the world. It's just a different level above sports. It's just pride. It's all these different things. And, you know, couldn't be happier to have it back. So when it comes to it being a year later, You know, it's usually every four years. Now we have this fifth year. It's in 2021. Do you think there's any hesitancy for advertisers to kind of, you know, latch on to something that's being marketed as a 2020 Olympics in a year later? Do you think that there's kind of a different struggle? Maybe you were trying to get people to buy in last year and now it got delayed a year that there's something different. How have you kind of seen the temperature in the room change with there being an extra year? I think the advertisers that wanted to be a part of it just shifted and were pretty fluid on it because they wanted to make sure they could stay and be involved. I don't think there's anything negative attached to it being delayed a year. Everything was, you know, everything was there and it it kind of makes them more starved for it. It makes the viewer more excited to, to see these things. And again, I think the the actions and the feelings of the viewers really f- flows right into how the advertisers should be behaving and how they should be sending it. So as the viewers become more excited because it's been even another extra year to wait before they can see this stuff again, the advertisers should be even more excited to get in front of that event and be in that programming. Because as I say, I mean, I think for the most part with probably a few minor exceptions, it's going to be an extravaganza because they're celebrating normalcy and getting back to normal and this event that's such a big deal and you know being a part of it is always a huge thing every four years and in this case it's been five years so it's just that one extra year of wanting to be involved in that 
Yeah, I couldn't agree anymore with what you just said because, you know, again, you and I talked as a couple sports fans. We're ready for it. We know that it's coming. We've been waiting for this for a while. And I think it kind of helps in a way, too. You get that anticipation. Like, you know, we were all so ready for it to happen. We were excited. We were, you know, we heard all of these new additions that were coming in this year. We couldn't wait for it. I'm a huge basketball fan. I have my own basketball podcast. So when they introduced the three-on-three tournament for the Olympics, I could not have been any more excited. You know, I know it's not going to be the biggest names, but, you know, we dream of seeing, if you go back to the 90s, Michael Jordan and, yeah. you know, Magic being able to play in a three-on-three against other different countries. That's like, that's like a movie in our minds. And now that we're going to be able to actually see it live along with these other sports that, you know, like you said, when it comes to the Summer Olympics, that's what we did in the summer as kids, right? We wanted to race each other outside. We wanted to kick the soccer ball around. We wanted to swim like Michael Phelps. It's just it gives a type of relatability and now it's even more anticipated than ever before because we get that extra year yeah. where, you know, still we're not in lockdown anymore, but there's still a big, you know, more people are more comfortable in their homes because they don't want to go out and see what, you know, is petrifying in the real world right now. So mm-hmm. you're going to be glued to the TV and everyone is just craving sports at an incredible level right now that it's just going to be absolutely bananas. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we've talked a few, a few, this whole conversation about the diversity of the audience and stuff like that. It's also a family audience. I have a, I have a five-year-old daughter. We watched the, um, it wasn't the Olympic trials, but it was one of the gymnastics events. And, you know, she saw Simone Biles for the first time and she lost her mind. She was yeah. like, just blown away. So like, we're, we're absolutely going to DVR the primetime coverage and watch it with her the next day. Um, a while back, you know, I, I got her an Alex Morgan Barbie doll for Christmas and um, the U S women's soccer team was on TV a while back. And I was like, Grace, that's, that's, that's the girl that that's your Barbie doll. That's the woman who, and she scored like five minutes later. It couldn't have been any better, but like <laughs> the family on it. So the family is going to sit there. I remember as a kid, my whole family watching together and it being a big deal. So, it's it's an engaged audience it's a diverse audience it's not your traditional sports audience it's families together it's an event it's it is unlike anything else because i mean the super bowl is the biggest sport every year but even the olympics because it's over two weeks you have so much more to it and so much it's so much more robust i feel like it's just such an event it it, it can't be compared to anything else no it can't and that example is prime because obviously, you know, when you talk about the United States, everyone's going to root for their country. Right. And, you know, we have people all over the world rooting for their countries, people that live in the United States, you know, where their ancestors are from, they have another interest there. But when it comes to, you know, especially the U.S. women's gymnastics and soccer teams, they're such big brands and they have, you know, people on those squads where, you know, a young girl like your daughter could be like, wow, like that's so amazing. And they're doing this for my country. I think that's just, you know, the beautiful existence of the Olympics, everything that it brings and, you know, not a traditional sports environment, but you get that kind of pride tied into it. They mm-hmm. give you the story of how all of these people got there. It's a beautiful event. I can't wait for it. I'm very excited to see what NYI has coming to see how, many different ways I could view this and all the different advertising tied into it. Jim, it was awesome having you on. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of your insight and what goes into all this type of event planning and getting advertising. It's so interesting to me and uh, I'm sure it's interesting to the audience as well. I cannot wait for the summer Olympics. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me on view from the grandstand. I can't wait either. And uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. It was great talking to you. No problem. Thanks so much.